What up? What's happening? Hoffman Show on the Team 980, and we are always live on that free Odyssey app. And we have two main stories today. We thought we'd have one. The one is that the Commanders are going to play a football game tomorrow for the first time as the Commanders. And we were going to preview that and the on the field, the off the field, all of those things. And then this morning, Jason Wright decided to tweet about Scott Abraham's question to Carson Wentz after Warren Sharp reposted it. And so we're going to talk about that first. And we're going to get right into it because I got a lot to say. And I've been stewing for five hours, so here we go. A team president going after a media member for a question to a starting quarterback is just truly uncalled for and almost inconceivable in every single way imaginable. One, Wright's tweet was threatening. It doesn't follow any semblance of how a relationship between media and the team should work. It's completely unbecoming of someone in his position, and it also shows, again, that Jason Wright doesn't know anything about media, which is a pretty damning indictment of a president of business operations for a professional football franchise. From a timing perspective, again, this is the day today before the first ever game as the Washington Commanders. The first one ever. New name, new fight song, new everything. Except this is a reminder that despite all that new stuff, this is the same old team. The team president is making news completely unrelated to any of that and completely changing the narrative from what we would otherwise be talking about. Completely changing the rundown of every talk show from talking about football and previewing the game Talking about the stuff they've been working on, the fight song, what will the stadium look like, all that, which is all they've wanted for the two years that Jason Wright is so proud of. And now we're talking about Jason Wright's Twitter account. Not surprising, though. This is the same man whose grandest idea was to unveil a new brand on the Today Show, whose Venn diagram with Commanders fans is two circles that barely overlap. Not Good Morning Football, not Sports Center, not through their own plentiful channels, but through a morning news program with a real journalist in Craig Melvin who told the full story. That story, lest you forget, is that the team needed a name change because the old one was racially insensitive at best and flat out violently racist at worst. That rebranding was happening amidst the organization being under congressional investigation for its toxic workplace after a league investigation found that the workplace was so bad that it handed out the largest fine in league history and told the owner he can't be around day to day anymore. And Jason Wright decided that he wanted to put all that on display for a nationwide audience so that Doug Williams could go we are the commanders and voila that's it that's the brand no hype video reveal no string of legends telling the stories of the franchise's better times no insight into how the name was picked or anything like that on the today show before the name was revealed just all of a sudden we are the commanders following a news story of how potentially criminally bad your workplace has been the last quarter century, and then a bunch of announcements that the rest of the brand will be unveiled at later dates, the last of which was supposed to be tomorrow, the first game as the Commanders. We are the Commanders. And instead, we're talking about Jason Wright's absurd usage of his Twitter account. So then... That was February 2nd. Remember, 2-2-22, the big deal. So then the football operation in March, something Jason Wright is not a part of, trades for a quarterback with a less-than-stellar recent history, including an all-time stinker in the last game of the season against the worst team in the league with a playoff spot on the line. Said quarterback, Carson Wentz, is the least accurate quarterback in the NFL the last two seasons per Warren Sharp's metric. So after said quarterback is bouncing balls off the turf against air in practice 
And people like me are going, wow, this, this is not ideal, but thank God it's only camp. Let's see what happens. And folks that are out there every day are like, yeah, he's inconsistent, and his footwork is, is inconsistent, so that makes some sense. But not all bad, but definitely inconsistent. Scott Abraham asks him this. There's been kind of a narrative out there here in training camp that you've been a little inaccurate um, on your throws. Uh, consistently inconsistent has been a kind of a terminology. How would you assess your performance in training camp and is that characterization uh, fair? Yeah, I mean, for one, it's camp. You know, I think uh, I didn't know that, so thank you. Yep. But, uh, yeah, because I, I know you time, told me you don't read that stuff. At the same time, uh, I'm my biggest critic. So I, I come back after practice yeah. and I'm kicking myself over one, two, three, four, five plays, you know. Um, but at the same time, they're usually things we can learn from. They're usually like, okay, this is what I was seeing. This is what I was feeling. Then go talk to the receiver. Hey, Terry, what were you feeling on that one? Um, maybe shutting it down in that zone or, or ripping through that zone, different things that opens up conversations. So, uh, you know, I'm definitely bummed when I miss them, but at the same time, let's use them as learning opportunities because it is a lot of our first time together. You know, there's been OTAs, there's things, but a lot of it is new and, and the, the more or less live reps against our defense, um, just seeing things differently. So trying to be uh, as clean as I can be, it hasn't been perfect by any means and I can continue to get better and I will. Um, but at the same time, I, I try not to beat myself up over it and just say, hey, how can we learn from it so that it doesn't happen uh, the next time, but especially on Sundays this year. And Scott asks a pointed question, and he asks another one to follow it up. Is, is it pointed? Yeah. Would some other reporters perhaps have smoothed the edges a little bit? Yeah. But in my opinion, that's actually less fair to Carson. Because what Scott did was present the real conversation happening and allow Carson, the person at the center of it, to respond. And he did, masterfully. He gave us real insight. He gave us real perspective. And I think it was a great answer. That's not, not, that's just part of playing quarterback in the NFL. You have to answer tough questions. And Carson nailed it. Not only saying the quote unquote right thing, diffusing the controversy, but being honest about where he sees things right now, where there are opportunities to grow. It's not like he told us lies. It's not like he said, no, that ball that hit the turf was actually complete. We're playing bouncy ball rules. He's like, no, that's an opportunity to learn. And so we have conversations and we do. And then Jason Wright, a team president, presiding over a declining franchise in terms of popularity, seen in any number of metrics, including the fact that they were second to last in the entire league in attendance last season, decides to nuke the reporter asking that very fair question. And he didn't minorly criticize. Jason threw a hissy fit. He actually used the words childish and pompous. He dared threaten him by saying, don't expect any special access or to build rapport with any of the guys which is a, fundal, a fundamental misunderstanding of the media. We're not all looking for special access. Other times you may request something out of the ordinary for a specific story. Yes. Are there reasons a team might invite a reporter in to cover something and there are stipulations around that? Yeah, that's the business. But day to day, we're looking to tell the stories with the access we have. We're looking for the required by rule access that the NFL has established and that is enforced by the Pro Football Writers Association of America that negotiates these types of things on all of our behalf. We're looking for the same types of interviews and access that we have been given for years, despite being critical, asking tough questions and telling the truth about uh, about what has consistently been a poorly run franchise on and off the field. And you know what? That honesty builds rapport. That honesty is what garners respect. You know how I know that? Because I did it. I was there. I brought up bad play with players. Not in a confrontational way, but in a way that allowed them to either correct the record or to answer for it. And generally speaking, players appreciated that. And even if you disagree with me and think that Scott was out of line and Jason's criticism is correct, which is something I think reasonable people can disagree on, it's absolutely not Jason's job to handle. Jason is the team president. He is not the team's public relations director. 
who I would bet every single dollar in every single one of my bank accounts is absolutely furious right now. And I'd bet the same amount that he's not the only one in the organization. And I bet that includes the head coach. This isn't how you handle things. And again, I know this because I've been there. When I was the beat reporter for the fan, I get at least one call a year from Tony Wiley, who was then the head of PR, yelling at me for something either I said or asked or often that someone else at the station did. I get yelled at for stuff the junkies did, and I'd be like, Tony, why the hell are you calling me about this? But I was the boots on the ground there, so I took the brunt of it. But you want to know what Tony did? He called me, and we talked about it. And without fail, by the end of the call, there was an understanding. And if I was wrong, I'd make a correction. And if he was wrong, or at least understood where I was coming from, he'd leave it at that, and we continue our professional relationship. Not once did I have my credential threatened. Not once did I have my access dangled over my head. Not once was an interview taken away from me because of me doing my job in a way that they didn't like. Because I didn't work for them. And if that messed up version of the organization could handle that, why can't Jason Wright's version? Jason Wright's organization that he's so proud of building the last two years, despite the epic blunders from Sean Taylor's number retirement to the brand unveiling to the busted sewage pipes to the failed training camp lottery system that he's overseen. This could have been handled through the PR office. It could have been handled privately. But truthfully, there was nothing to handle at all. Scott did his job. Carson did his. The only person who was unprofessional was Jason Wright. The only person who was pompous was Jason Wright. The only person who was childish, mad because he didn't get what he wanted, which is apparently fawning propaganda that misleads the fan and misleads the fans and belies what we've all seen with our own eyes was Jason Wright. And at the end of the day, what this is, is a reminder, is that Jason Wright is a person who works for Daniel Snyder. And if I'm going to give Jason some grace, maybe this just wasn't his best moment. And the pressure of working for Snyder amidst congressional investigations, a failed stadium negotiation, multiple league investigations, and investigations by D.C., Maryland, and Virginia into the way they run their business, not to mention all of the other things I've been talking about for the last 20 minutes, pounding on him every single day, just got to him. And he had a human moment. And he broke, and he was frustrated, and he lashed out. But realistically, no matter if this was an out-of-character moment for Jason, or if it was a revelation-of-character moment for Jason, this was a Daniel Snyder-like moment. You don't like someone? Go after them. Someone says something that's unflattering about you, threaten them. Culture change? Not so much. It's a Dan Snyder move from Dan Snyder's team president as we sit here in 2022 on the eve of the commander's debut. We are the commanders. And some things are still the absolute exact same. This is the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.